Hello there. Uh, if you are looking for a super fast quick review for glycogen storage disorders, you are in the right place. If you want to learn individual disorders, so please check out my YouTube channel for individual disorders on glycogen storage disorders. So let's uh, begin with the first one that is the Van Gerke disease. So Van Gerke disease is a glycogen storage disorder type 1A and that's because of deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. So some of the uh, signs and symptoms that you are going to see here are fasting hypoglycemia. Severe fasting hypoglycemia can be seen. So patients with this disorder will have hepatorenomegaly which is something which is special to Van Gerke disease type 1A. Lactic acidosis can be seen, ketoacidosis, hyperuricemia and hyperlipidemia especially hypertriacylglycerolemia and hypercholesterolemia can be seen here. Now there is another type of Van Gerke disease that is type 1B and type 1B is because of mutation in T1 transporter. Note that glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme is located in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. So glucose 6-phosphate has to get into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum and that will be through T1 transporter. Once it gets into lumen of endoplasmic reticulum, glucose 6-phosphatase is going to convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose plus inorganic phosphate. So inorganic phosphate comes out into the cytoplasm through T2 transporter and glucose comes out into cytoplasm uh, through T3 transporter. So if there is a mutation in T1 transporter, so that means glucose 6-phosphate stays back in the cytoplasm and that get into a variety of pathways and type 1B disorder will show all the signs and symptoms that you have seen in type 1A that is fasting hypoglycemia, hepatorenomegaly, lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, hyperuricemia, hyperlipidemia. Along with that, these patients will show neutropenia and neutrophil dysfunction thereby they are at risk of infection. So if you want an individual video at a slower pace on Van Gerke disease, please check out my uh, other uh, YouTube uh, video on this in the as in the link that is appearing right above right now in the right corner. Let's move on to see Pompey's disease. So Pompey disease is the only glycogen storage disorder that is a lysosomal glycogen storage. So this is a lysosomal storage disorder and that's because of a deficiency in acid alpha alpha 1,4 glucosidase and acid alpha 1,6 glucosidase. So together these two enzymes are referred as acid maltase. So acid maltase deficiency lead to accumulation of glycogen in lysosomes of all the tissues. So what are all the signs and symptoms? So you will see muscle weakness. That's one of the major, major sign that you see in Pompey disease. So you will see a baby with uh, as a floppy baby appearance. And also frog-like position because the legs, uh, because of the developmental delay will be there. Muscle weakness do not allow, like proper tone of the muscle won't be there. So that will assume frog-like position, baby will assume frog-like position, developmental delay. And one of the important signs that you need to look for in Pompey disease is cardiomyopathy leading to cardiac failure. So one of the cause, most common cause of death in Pompey disease is cardiac failure. Gastrointestinal muscle weakness that can give rise to difficulty in the feeding and digestion problems can be seen. Respiratory muscle weakness can lead to respiratory failure and ultimately patients will be on ventilators. If you take muscle biopsy, so obviously you will see enlarged lysosomes which are filled with the glycogen and that's why you will see pass positive material in lysosome. That's about Pompey disease. Now let's move on to see McCardell disease. So McCardell disease is because of mutation in muscle glycogen phosphorylase which is also referred as myophosphorylase. So the patients with McCardell disease will have exercise intolerance and muscle cramps whenever they do brief activity of intense nature or a, a slower activity for a long period of time. So basically Glycogen is not broken down into glucose 1-phosphate in the skeletal muscle when the activity is going on. That leads to deficiency of ATPs and ATP deficiency can lead to rhabdomyolysis and that leads to leakage of myoglobin in the blood and then into the urine giving rise to myoglobinuria and the color of urine will be burgundy color urine. 
Now along with that, because the red, um, skeletal muscle is breaking open, so that's why obviously you'll see elevated levels of CK3 and that is CKMM. So blah, there'll be increase in serum ammonia level because protein amino acids need to, uh, the amino group of amino acids will be converted to ammonia in the liver. Hypoxanthin is elevated and urate levels are elevated upon activity. So there is a ischemic exercise test that is done in macular disease as a screening test. So basically the patient will be uh, tied with a blood pressure cuff and inflated to 60 millimeter of mercury and uh, basal blood sample is taken and estimated for uh, lactate and blood ammonia level. Then patient is asked to squeeze a rubber ball and as long as that he can squeeze and whenever the muscle cramps occurs the patient stops activity and then the blood sample is taken after activity. So during that time there is no change or decreased lactate and there will be increase in blood ammonia level. So that is a positive ischemic exercise test. Why there is no change or decrease in blood lactate and that's because of the Cori cycle which is constantly removing lactate and glycogen degradation not going on so it means glycolysis is not going on so that means lactate production has decreased here and blood ammonia level increased that's because of the rhabdomyolysis and that's about McArdle's disease there. Coming with the Hirsch disease. So Hirsch disease is deficiency in liver glycogen phosphorylase. This is one of the milder disorder here. So patient will have mild hepatomegaly due to accumulation of glycogen and there will be mild to moderate fasting hypoglycemia and its signs like fainting, anxiety, uh, dizziness that kind of signs can be seen. Slight developmental delay but signs and symptoms regress as the patient develops into adulthood. Coming to the Taurus disease. So Taurus disease is because of muscle and RBC phosphofructokinase deficiency. So you need to look, uh, take a note that there are two types of cells that are affected. One is muscle and there is RBC. So this particular disorder is common in Ashkenazi Jewish and Japanese population. Signs and symptoms are similar to that of McArdle disease. And that's because muscle phosphofructokinase is deficient. It means glycolysis is not going on properly in the muscle. So that means patient will have exercise intolerance, muscle cramps, increased CK3, blood ammonia, hypoxanthin, urate levels will be increased and of course positive ischemic exercise test just like McArdle's disease. Plus since RBCs are affected here, so that means Hemolytic anemia is seen because red blood cells are breaking open in the uh, absence of or in deficiency of ATPs. So hemolytic anemia lead to uh, increased loss of hemoglobin taken into the liver and that is converted to bilirubin. So bilirubin conjugation, there is a limitation in the bilirubin conjugation. That means there is increased bilirubin in the blood giving rise to jaundice. So McArdle's disease plus jaundice that will give you Tarvis disease. Coming with the Anderson disease. So Anderson disease is because of deficiency of glycogen branching enzyme and that is 4,6 transferase which is basically amylo alpha 1,4 to alpha 1,6 transferase. So Anderson disease basically it is diagnosed based on the type of glycogen that is accumulated in the tissue. So that is the characteristic feature you need to look for Anderson disease. So accumulation of glycogen with long linear chains with very few branch points. That makes sense here because we are talking about branching enzyme being deficient so obviously there will be very few branch points in a type of glycogen that is being accumulated. So that's a very important clue for you to go towards Anderson disease. Coming to the Corich disease. So Corich disease is because of deficiency of glycogen debranching enzyme which is, all, which is basically a, a bifunctional enzyme. It has got two enzymatic activity. One is 4,4 transferase and the other is alpha 1,6 glucose sedase. 4,4 transferase what it does it's going to remove three glucose residue from another branch point and reinsert somewhere else. And alpha 1,6 glucose sedase it releases that one glucose left at the branch point as glucose molecule. Overall in uh, Cori disease there will be accumulation of glycogen with short outer branch points. It means only glycogen phosphorylase is working under fasting condition. Debranching is deficient, that's why type of glycogen that you are going to see here will have either four glucose residue left at the branch point or one glucose residue left at the branch point. 
it all depends on which part of debranching enzyme is deficient if only one 4-4 transferase part is deficient that leads accumulation of glycogen with four glucose residues left at the branch point that kind of glycogen you are going to see whereas if only alpha 1,6 glucosidase part of debranching enzyme is deficient that means it leads to accumulation of glycogen with one glucose residue at the branch point so 4-4 transferase deficiency means four glucose residues are left at the branch point if 1,6 glucosidase deficiency means there is one glucose residue left at the branch point so 4-4 for four, four, four uh, so it means four glucose 1,6 means one glucose residue at the branch point easy to remember so Anderson's disease it is a branching enzyme deficiency Corish disease it is debranching enzyme deficiency so it means it can remember this as A, B, C, D. Anderson branching, Cori D branching. That's all about uh, glycogen storage disorder. So hope this super fast review uh, helped you to recap this particular uh, uh, category because this is an important uh, disorders which are tested in different kinds of exam. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, so please give thumbs up and consider subscribing for regular updates. And if you have any queries, any comments, kindly leave them in the comment section below. See you in my next video. Thank you and take care.